Here is a project that I've been meaning to put together ever since introducing Blender into the local Coda Dojo that I've been volunteering at, which is mostly introducing all kinds of tech stuff to kids. But really, I'm hoping anyone of any age might have some fun with this project. So the fun to be had in Blender is directly linked to your ability to get around the 3D space. So I think it's really worth spending a little time practicing moving around the viewport and it never hurts to quickly go over this again as it's very quick. It's all on the middle mouse button. And by the way, I know it's pretty quick, but over here in the bottom right, I've got a whole bunch of key pressings that should be showing up there. But let's go through this navigation nice and quick. So on the middle mouse button, we can just press it down and then we're gonna rotate around that object that we have selected. If we hold down the shift key and then press middle mouse to move around, we're going to pan side to side and up and down. And if we hold down the control key and then middle mouse, you can see we're going to move in and out of the scene. I've jumped into this other scene here that I've quickly created, it's just a bunch of cubes on a plane with some walls. And I want to tell you another way in which you can navigate around the view as well, which is too cool to miss out. So if we go down to view and then go to navigation, you can see there's this fly navigation and the walk navigation. Now these are both kind of similar and quite cool, but I'm just going to focus on the walk navigation for a minute. And the shortcut for that is shift F. So let's escape out of that using our little escape button from the top left corner of your keyboard. And then I'm going to go shift F. And now if we take a look down here, in fact, let me just cancel that again with the escape key. Just watch down here as all this information is going to go away and you're going to be presented with lots of key presses that will affect the current mode that we're using. And in this case, after pressing shift F, it's going to be this fly mode, this sort of walking around mode. So you can see at the bottom there, it says LNB which is left mouse button to confirm, escape to cancel, tab is going to be for the gravity. And the main thing you need to know really is it's W, A, S and D to move around. And it's the mouse to look around in the position. So it's kind of like a typical first person shooter game. If we press the tab key, we'll create some gravity and Blender will detect the floor of our objects that we've created. And it's quite a lot of fun to get sometimes quite new perspectives on what you've created, especially if perhaps what you're creating is actually a game and the environment will find its way into some kind of first person shooter. Once we've moved into position, we can just press left click and now the camera has moved there. Otherwise, if we were again to go shift F and then move to a new place and then press escape or the right mouse button, the camera will remember where you were last time and we'll bounce back to that position. So back in here, we have our default scene, which is going to include a camera, a lamp and this cube. And we're actually going to use this cube. We're going to have a little bit of fun with it. Now, the first thing I want to do is left click on this blue arrow, the blue axis of this transform gizmo that we have. Left clicking on that is going to move this cube in that direction. So I'm just going to lift it up to about there and then just let go. And this cube in this very empty void is probably a bit on the lonely side. There's not a lot we could do with this. So let's give this some sort of floor at least to ground it in reality. So for that, I'm going to come over to the add menu meshes at the bottom and then we want to give it a plane. Now that plane shows up at the location of your 3D cursor. Any new object in fact does. And if we left click, you can see my 3D cursors bouncing around the screen. If we press N to open up our property sidebar, we'll find at the top of it there, the location and rotation information and scale for that matter of the object that we've just created, this plane that we have selected. And you can check what you've got selected by just taking a look in the bottom left there. Now, if we scroll down this property sidebar by maybe left clicking on this long thin bar that we have on the right side or using your middle mouse wheel to scroll through, you can find that there is actually a 3D cursor section. And this is where our 3D cursor is at the moment. And if we want to left click and drag across all of these and let go and then key in zero, it's going to bounce back to the center of the world. So if this was over here and we went to add in a mesh plane, you can see the plane is actually going to show up over there. Now let's scroll back up by using the middle mouse wheel here. You can see the location of that plane is in this position. So if you wanted to put it back to the center of the world, we could left click and drag across these again, press zero and put it back. But remember, we already had a plane there. In fact, if I come over to this little window in the top right corner, which is a list of all the objects that we have in our scene, you can see we've got this plane and we've got a plane to 001. So we've got two of these things and we only need the one. So I'm just going to press X to delete. 
So because the left mouse button is controlling the position of our 3D cursor, let's put that back to the center of the world again, zero. To select an object, we're going to need our right mouse button. And you can tell what we have selected thanks to this little orange outline that we have around here. So I'm gonna reselect this plane. And this little arrow here means this gizmo with the three arrows on it, the blue, green, and red arrows is going to allow us to move things around. I'm just going to undo that with Control and Z. Or we could use our object menu and undo using this as well. As you can see on the right hand side of many of these menus, by the way, there's also a lot of handy shortcut information. And also we can hit the space bar and we can just type in what we're looking for there as well. And then we can find that tool again. So this first one is for translation. This second one is for rotation. And this third one is for scaling. So I'm just gonna left click on the green axis and the red axis and stretch it out so that the cube has a fairly safe feeling but as we'll see not really for long and now the next thing we want to be able to do is to make our cube fall onto the ground we can do that in a couple of places i'm going to do it in the tool shelf which by the way we can toggle on and off with the t key if we look down the left hand side squashed in there is a tab this one here is called physics and if we left click and stretch from the far right of the tool shelf we can just bring that out a little bit to read all these letters properly we've got two main things that we can do we we can add an active or we can add a passive. If the object is going to move, we want it to be active. So I've clicked on that and now the borderline has gone green to show us that this has got physics on it. And then I'm gonna right click on our plane and I'm gonna set that as being passive. So I'm gonna click that there because this floor here isn't gonna move, but the cube is. Now, if we wanna see some of our settings there, we can come over to our properties window. And then on the very right hand side, that looks a little bit like a bouncy ball. Here's the physics that we've just added. There's the active and there's the passive options again. So here's our cube set to active. Now, if we come down to this window, this is our timeline. Over here, we can click on the little icon at the bottom left of this window and you can see we can change it to anything else we want. These four down here are all to do with animation and we're currently on the timeline. So if we left click in here, we can drag through and see our animation. Now with physics, that doesn't really work very well because it hasn't properly calculated the physics yet. What we want to do is to click the play button instead, which is just this little triangle that's pointing to the right. Once I do that, it can calculate each frame of the animation. I'm gonna stop that there by hitting the pause that comes up. Clearly no more physics is gonna be required after it just falls and hits that ground that we've made for it. So let's go back to the animation. We can just left click and drag in here back to the start there. This is frame zero that we're on at the moment, which you can see here. Or if this green vertical line was over here showing us that we're now on frame 186, we could actually just press this button as well. Just clicking that will take us back to the start of the animation. Let's move over in front of the cube slightly and see what else we can do with this. Let's give it a face. So what I'm going to do, I'm finished with the physics tab now. I'm gonna move over to this grease pencil tab. So if I hold down the D key, I can left click and drag in the view and start to draw. So I'm just gonna draw a little face on this. Nothing too crazy, pretty straightforward stuff. Let's give it a smile. Now that looks pretty good, but if we take a look around, you can see that that smile hasn't really happened where we wanted it to be. It's kind of inside the cube almost. So what I'm going to do with that is hit Control Z and then keep hitting Control Z until it's removed all the strokes that I made there. And instead of the stroke placement over here being cursor, I'm going to set that to surface. Now, when we draw on anything, so let's draw a little something there, a little something there, and a little something there. It should have stuck to the surface of whatever was right in front of the cursor as we were drawing. Now, there is still a little issue since this little bit on the floor over there, you can actually see through the cube. So what we need to know about is our properties sidebar also has some grease pencil information in it, which we can see right here. And currently it's set to X-ray. So if we just line that up again and then uncheck our X-ray option, you can see now it behaves maybe a little bit more predictably as though it really is something that we've just drawn on top of. So with our stroke placement set to surface and our X-ray switched off, I'll now show you some of the modes in which we can work. So if we click on this option here, you can see we've got all these different modes. Now we're not gonna be doing anything particularly complicated today, but we do want to be able to edit our strokes. So I'm just gonna click on that there. And then we have a new menu item here called Grease Pencil. We also have our select menu here and we can select everything. And then just as before, we can press X to delete those points. Now, when we're in this edit strokes option, it means that we're not gonna be able to do anything with our objects. So if we try to move our objects, we're not gonna be able to. 
for that we're going to need to be able to be in object mode again that's just something i thought was worth pointing out early on it's a very easy way to get stuck and not know why things aren't quite working properly so let's line up the cube again and give this a face so something like two circles for the eyes a little bit of a scribble for the pupils and a nice smile all right so with that done and feeling much more cheerful now that we've got something cheerful to look at let's play our animation ah right so if we click on this little pause icon that's come up click the little far left double arrows here to set that back to the start so our drawing has worked but it's not really on the cube after all so what we're going to want to do is parent what we've drawn to this cube now there's a pretty easy way to do that you can just come over to the parent option over here and we'll find our cube in the list now let's try playing that animation again yeah that's more like it let's take it back to the start and i think i want a little bit more of an interesting fall so what i'm going to do is switch over to the rotation just rotate it a little bit by dragging on any of these axes really i'm going to try and get the red one just maybe move it back slightly and then let's select the plane and let's not make it perfectly flat let's have it slide a little bit when it lands so we could maybe move the green axis so i'm going to left click on the green circle we have there and that looks about right but if we want to get really precise about these sorts of things it can be quite handy to completely change the view so i'm going to go to view and then we can have all these different ones here so let's try the left view well that's not really right so i'm going to go to the front view instead and that's looking a lot better but we're actually seeing things in perspective and i don't really want that to happen so I'm going to go back to view and we can see that we have this option perspective or orthographic ortho in other words for short. So I'm going to click on that and it's going to give us a much more mathematical way of representing what's in our scene. And it also happens to be really easy to just left click and drag this around now and it rotates it perfectly for us without it say accidentally rotating in another axis. So in this orthographic view we don't get any perspective so things far away don't get any smaller in other words and things really close to the camera well the same thing happens they still maintain the same if they're actually two units across which this cube is you can just about make these squares out one of those squares is one unit then it doesn't matter how far away you are from it it's always going to look like it's two units across it's going to line up on this grid all right so with that done let's go and switch to our perspective view and then i'm just going to middle click and drag around and now what we want to do is we want to see our cube land so i'm going to go alt a and play that animation and then alt a to stop so alt a is the shortcut key for just hitting the play button down here but we're getting a much more interesting drop so i'm going to left click and drag to the start and maybe just play with the animation the rotation of how our physics are going to move here because i want the face to be still looking roughly in this direction so i'm going to try that press alt a again and that's looking pretty good but it's not really very slippery this surface could do with being a lot more like ice if it's if we're going to try and make it slide off here which is by the way what i want it to do so with this plane selected now I'm going to come back over to make sure that we're on our physics tab in our properties window and over here we've got the surface response and in particular this friction so if we take this all the way down yeah let's take it all the way down to zero and then let's take it back to the beginning of the animation and then click play let's see if it just keeps on sliding yeah that's perfect okay let's pause that bring it back to the start of the animation and we'll talk a little bit more about our grease pencil strokes that we're making here so we said before that this window down here is the timeline and if we click on this little clock icon in the bottom left we have these four windows down here of which the timeline is one these other three are also to do with animation but they're probably the most important one for us right now is the dope sheet if we click on there it all changes around a little bit but we've still got our vertical green slider which is going to allow us to left click and drag along the timeline there so that we can still scrub through our animation and by the way you'll notice we no longer have that play button anymore which is why it's pretty useful to remember our alt a animation toggle so if we press alt a we can start and if we press alt a again while it's still playing we can stop it so let's bring that back to the start here and where it says dope sheet here i'm going to click on this and i'm going to change that to grease pencil and then when i do that you can see that our dope sheet window is no longer empty we have this little white diamond there now similar in the 3d view you need the right mouse button to be able to select it's the same thing in this window so if we right click on that diamond it turns yellow because we've selected it if i right click and drag i can actually move that around but i'm actually going to just leave that right at the start so i'm going to right click again which just cancels what we did there 
If we wanted to move it, we would right click and then left click to place it into position. But again, I'm gonna just leave that at the start. So I'm gonna right click and drag on it. And then I'm gonna drop it down just at the beginning here. So I'm gonna left click now just to move that back to the beginning. So that is our grease pencil stroke. And it's gonna show us that drawing for any frame after that point until we draw in another one. So right now I'm going to take a look around and our little rotation gizmo is kind of getting in the way here. It almost looks like a nose. So I'm going to switch that off by just clicking on this icon here, just next to the gizmo options. Let's just draw in a quick blink. So I'm going to press D and then left click across the view like that to draw in a little line. And then we could draw in another little line there. And then again, a little smile. But while drawing that, I think it might have been a little bit helpful if we could have seen what we'd already drawn, sort of almost traced around it, just to make sure our eyes didn't kind of go off in the corner. I mean, when we blink, our eyes don't move all over our face, do they? So we want to make sure we get them roughly in the right position. And animators call the, the tool to be able to do that, onion skinning. Each layers of an onion are quite thin and we can kind of see through them. So we can click on this here and you can see now we can, in this faded green color, where we drew before. Well, I'm actually quite happy with that already. So I'm just going to leave that as it is. Otherwise, we could go Control Z and just roll back those changes, turn on our onion skinning, and then press D to just draw through for the eyelids there. And then let's just copy the position of our smile again. So with that, I'm going to turn off onion skin in again, scroll back the middle mouse wheel just to zoom out a little bit, or we could hold control and middle mouse wheel to get a much smoother movement in and out. And then I'm going to left click and drag this to the start of the timeline, start the animation and then go Alt A to play it. And there we go. All right. So he's sleeping. So we don't really want that. So let's just scroll with our middle mouse wheel into where we've got the start of our animation here. And what I'll do is I'll, with this first one selected, so make sure that one's yellow, I'm going to go Shift and D. And when we go Shift D, we can now start moving around and you'll notice we've got a new one. So this has duplicated it and I'm just gonna leave it a couple of frames after the first one. So this is our first original smile drawing that we did. And it's just going to show up a couple of frames after our blink. So let's take a look at that. Alt A to play. And yeah, we have our little blink. I'm going to make it blink twice. So I'm going to select both of these by selecting the first one and then holding shift and then selecting the second one. So with these both selected, I'm going to go shift and D again and just move them to be about there. And let's left click and drag to the start and then Alt A to play it again. So we have a nice couple of blinks now. So let's left click and drag to the start of the animation and press play again. All right, so the grease pencil is showing pretty good, I think. We've got a good couple of blinks there, but the cube isn't really behaving properly. It's suddenly just slamming down into the floor there. And what that usually means is that the physics simulation is a little bit confused. So let's just show another tab in our properties window. We're just going to go over to this third one along. This is the scene tab and come down to where we have our rigid body world and the rigid body cache. The rigid body cache is another name for the memory in which it's put aside just for the calculations of this physics. And a little tip here, if we actually take our object mode, switch it to edit mode, and then switch it back to object mode. That's one way in which we'll flush out the cache, if you like. So if there's any unusual frames or physics calculations going on, we can just do that little trick and it'll clean everything up for us. And then what we can do is also click the free all bakes that will try to clear the memory as well. And then we can click bake and very, very quickly, it automatically figures out what should be happening on every frame. That makes it a lot easier when we're sort of scrubbing through. So maybe I'm not going to scrub all the way through. I just want to know what's happening on frame 60. So I can just click frame 60 and it should place the cube or any of the objects that has physics in the right positions. So the next thing I'd like to do is just scrub through until we find where the cube hits the ground. And at that point, put a little face on there, which is kind of going like, ow. <laughs> so it looks like it happens there, but it's not immediately obvious since we haven't really got any shadows in the scene. Now Blender gives us an opportunity to scroll down the properties sidebar here. And just under the shading area, we have this ambient occlusion. That's just another way of kind of saying like contact shadows. Our grid is a little bit in the way there though. So I'm going to open up our display area and just turn off the grid floor. And then if I scrub through, you can see that little bit of shadow that we get kind of is much more noticeable around there. We have some settings for the ambient occlusion. So we can turn that really high up if we really want to see it. Maybe I'll just set it around 1.5. So it definitely looks like it's in contact with the ground there. Let's maybe fine tune its position right there really is where it exactly hits. 
Now we have our blinks going on there, so I'm going to move those out of the way. So I'm going to take all of these, I'm shift selecting all of the keyframes that we've got. And then what we're going to do is press the G key for kind of a grab. And then what we can do now is we can grab them and move them off to the left. When we're happy with the position, I'm just going to press left click to drop them into position. That's the same for the 3D view, by the way. Instead of using this manipulator, we can turn that on and off here. But if we want to be able to keep it off, we can just learn some shortcut keys, which is G to move that around, R to rotate it, and S to scale it. So with that, we have our couple of blinks further up on the timeline now, and here is where we want our impact face. So what does an impact face look like? I don't really know. Let's give, I'll try this kind of thing for the eyes, and I'm gonna come back up to the grease pencil settings and turn back on our onion skinning so I can trace over where everything was before. Instead of a smile or a straight line or something, I'm gonna give it a little ooh like that. That looks good to me. Let's turn off the onion skinning again and let's play back what we have. So Alt A. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, so around here, we're no longer gonna go back to a smile. So let's turn our onion skinning back on and draw in some kind of smaller eyes now. Get those little pupils inside there. Let's kind of have an unimpressed, unemotional face. Let's turn off our onion skinning again and play back from the start. So I think we're coming close to the end of this plane and I think our cube is gonna realize that. So somewhere around here, we're gonna widen the eyes and make it look a little bit more unhappy about falling off. So again, with the onion skinning on, and make those eyes a little bit wider. And again here, just holding down D and then left clicking while the D is still pressed. And then let's give it a little bit of a something like this. So we've had time to think about things. The little bump onto the ground wasn't so pleasant. So let's take another look through this. Alt A to play. Okay, that's fine. Let's give it another plane to land onto. Let's give it some hope. So I'm going to come from the side view. So view, and then let's take a look. I think it's the right view, was it? No, we think we need the front view, actually. And let's switch that to an orthographic view. With this plane selected, I'm going to go Shift D to duplicate it and then lift it down. Now we can't see the position of the first one because we're in this solid shading view, but if we switch that to wireframe, it may be a little bit tricky to see, but there's our first plane and here's our second. And from here, I'm gonna rotate this so it's even steeper, but we must remember we baked our physics animation, so it's kind of gonna ignore everything from this point. So we're going to want to come over, free all the bakes, and then we'll bake it again. Happens really quickly. And now let's switch back to our normal viewing, the solid shading viewing that we've been using. I'm going to middle click around. We're still in orthographic view though, so things far away aren't really going to get any smaller. So I'm going to go view, change that back to perspective. And from the start, let's play the animation. Ah, I enjoy the happy face there at the start. Alt A. Okay, so let's find where it hits the second one, second plane down. I'm going to middle click and drag across here just to go further on in the timeline. So it's about there. So th at that point, let's give our cube the kind of, oh no, we're going to fall face. Let's take the eyes as wide as they can go. Something like this. And the mouth we can turn into like an R. Let's kind of show a little bit of teeth coming through there. I'm just using a mouse to draw all this, by the way, but you can, of course, get a pen tablet to make this sort of stuff a little bit easier. And another quick tip, if you're not happy with something that you've drawn, holding D and then right clicking acts as a kind of a rubber, kind of erases things out. Well, I was happy enough with what we had there, so I'm going to undo that with Control Z. Let's control and middle click away from our scene there. I'm going to hold Control and middle click to zoom out on this timeline down here as well. Let's zoom out a little bit more. Let's start it from the beginning. Alt A. <laughs> All right, so I think we're just about done. Just a little bit of polish. Let's go back to the start. I'm going to select our cube. Let's come over to our materials tab, which is this little sphere looking icon over here. Let's give it a little bit of a pink tone. So I'm going to push it towards pink a little bit. And then also these planes on the ground. Let's click on the new button to give this a floor material. I'm just going to click in there and just type floor in. And then let's set this to be something in the green tones, something like that. And this one doesn't have any material on, so I'm going to click on this icon here to look through the materials that we have in the scene, and I'm going to click on floor there. That helps these objects really stick out from the background now. The only thing left to do on this is to really render it out. That means converting this scene into something that we could just play as a little movie file. So over here we have our camera. 
and it's our camera that's going to render this out. Now, if we go up to the top here to our render options and just click render image, we're going to get all this extra shading and everything going on with the lighting. And that's not something I really want to cover just at the moment. So instead, what I'm going to do is we're going to use these render buttons that we have in the 3D viewport itself. So to clean things up a little bit, I'm going to turn off the onion skinning. I'm also going to come down and turn on only render. And now it's only going to show us in the viewport the things that we want to see in our movie. Now, when I click on this little icon here, it renders out that image for us. Now I'm going to click on the escape key just to go back to the view that we were looking at a second ago. And then all we need to do now is just find a position for our viewport camera. And then let's try rendering that again. That looks pretty good. Let's scrub through the timeline just to check we get all the details we need. OK, so we can't really see the face from that angle. So I'm going to try a different view like this. Let's see. That <laughs> looks about right. So I think we'll get everything we need from this angle. And the only thing left to do is to come over to this first tab along, this little camera. And here we'll find the resolution, how big the image or the movie is that we want to render out is. I'm going to set that all the way up to 100%. So this is like a HD image, 1920 by 1080. And it's going to render everything from frame 1 to frame 250. But if we scrub through, maybe we don't need all that probably just finish at frame 130. So I'm going to type in 130 as our end frame. And then we have our output section a little bit lower down. So we'll want to navigate through to where we want to render this out to and also give it a name. I'm going to call this cube tube. Now we could render it out as a series of images. This is so simple and it's going to render so fast. I'm actually going to just render it out as a movie. So I'm going to choose FFmpeg video. We'll click the color option and then down under the encoding. I'm going to change that to be an mp4 and everything else I'll leave as default. So to actually render out the whole thing, I'm just going to come down to this icon on the right hand side, this little movie clapperboard thing. Instead of just getting a single image on this left side, we'll get the whole movie with this right side. So let's click on that and we'll watch it render through. Depending on the speed of your computer would we'll depend on how fast that got done. I'm just going to scroll this up to the top. After that's done, we can come up to render and we can just play rendered animation and it's just opened up a little viewer for us. All right, so that's it. I hope you had fun with that. There's several things that we could do with this. We could add a few extra blinks in there, or maybe some extra faces, maybe some more interesting geometry for the cube to just bounce along. Maybe there's two cubes, and one finds the whole experience hilarious, and the other one's kind of this grumpy version that we've done, or more troubled version at least. We could play with the colors. We could make it a little bit longer. But hopefully that gives you enough to get moving around because the main thing with this is to just get really comfortable moving around the 3D view. And once we get the hang of all that stuff, then there's really no stopping us.